Okay, you have come back because this is near and this is far. And now it is Jen's turn again. And remember, she's still back here in town. She is now going to come over here to the saloon because she spent a little bit of time to make some money. She's got five gold to spend. And what is she going to... So she can get these better ones. All right, well, she can get Crazy Lizard Man here who increases your morale, the hearts, by four and gives you two sword strength. Hmm. Now that would be great if Jen plan and this is a mystical character. Oh, this is another invisible character. You'll notice it's a mask. It's a lizard mask that they're wearing. The two invisible people are out. I love the invisible people. Um, anyway, so Jen could afford to hire that guy. But that would be if she wants to go heavy into combat. And she's not really planning on doing that. In fact, one of the artifacts she drafted is this mirror hat that gives her the ability to avoid combat completely and just skip past brigands and mercenaries and stuff. So she doesn't want him. So I think instead of just coming right over here to hire him, I mean, she could hire a lower one, but heck, there's a lot of swords here. She wants this guy. So she can't stay at the mine and do this again. So she's going to come over here to the general store. She has a choice. She can make one gold or she can draw four artifacts, any combination of advanced or basic ones, and then take any number of those. She's come here for the gold. That gives her six gold, which means she can hire Mr. Invisible. All right, so that was her turn. Now it is my turn again. I'm still out here in the world. I have no hearts, but if I wanted, uh, remember, I need hearts to be able to move multiple spaces, and I need hearts to be able to set up camps, which is a big part of the game. Remember, as soon as somebody sets up all their camps, that triggers the end of the game, and every camp is worth a point. So I don't have any hearts, but if I wanted, I could travel one space to come over here to the Star Boulder, and I could have another adventure and roll the dice, but I've got no hearts to help me, so I would just have to hope for the best. So do I do that? My other option is, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. At any given time, you can, even if you're off to, all the way over here, you can come back to town and go to any space you want. So where am I going to go? Uh, do I come out here, have another adventure? And, you know, if it's a combat adventure, again, my characters give me plus two on a roll. So I have a chance, but you saw how well my first roll went. If I hadn't had the hearts, I wouldn't have gotten anything. So I don't like my chances. So if I, if I come over here... Succeed or fail, this is going to go away. And honestly, I don't really care about this because I don't need it for any artifacts. If I succeed, I'll get some rewards and some bonuses like you saw. But if I fail, I will have spent an entire turn and gotten nothing for it. And this is a race game, so I don't like my chances. I think for my next turn, I'm coming back to town and I'm going to visit one of these buildings. Now, where do I want to go? Where indeed? So it's interesting, if I, if I came here, I could duel Jen, which would give me the opportunity to reduce my, um, what do you call it, my, I can't think of the word, my um, reputation a little bit more. But you know what, I've already dropped reputation once, because here's the thing, I don't want to duel Jen right now, I don't want to duel here until I have built my flint lock pistol, which gives me plus two on every duel I do. Um, I already have negative... Um, one reputation. Was that what it was? No, negative two. So I went from zero to negative two. I already have a negative enough reputation. I need four bucks to be able to build this. It'll be worth three points to me if I do. And then dueling Jen will make a lot of sense because I can use that to reduce my reputation really far because I need to get my reputation down to negative four to eventually build my gambler's dice. Um, although to build them, I will also need eight bucks and I need to be in good with the um, outlaws. Fortunately, I am because of that person I hired. So I've already got that covered. All righty. So I'm not going to duel Jen right now. I could come over here to the farm where I would get food equal to my skill. My skill is one because of this one person. So that would give me one food. And with one food, I could then come over here to the stables to hire a pack bird. And then once I've got a pack bird, I can come over here and a pack bird will let me carry around a treasure. So I could spend a few turns in town. Uh, that wouldn't be bad. Do I want to recruit somebody? I have one gold. One gold is not really going to let me recruit anybody. I need at least three. Uh, but again, if I came over here and dueled Jen, I could get a second gold, but I'd still need more. Now, I do have one skill from that one person I've hired, so I could come over here to the mine. Yeah, I'm just going to come here to the mine like Jen did, and I'm going to... Um, now, Jen has done the, been the first mine, so I have to expand orthogonally. I can go down or I can go laterally. But to go laterally, I need two skill. I don't have two skill. I only have one. So I'm going to dig down deeper, which requires one skill. And that gives me a gold here. Plus, I have revealed my first space. So that just got me two gold. 
One, two. So now I've got three gold, which is going to be enough to hire somebody else if I want. So that was my turn. Jen's turn. She is now coming over to the saloon, and she is spending her six, one, two, three, four, five, six, to recruit Mr. I mean, I got to give this guy a name. He's so cool. So Jen is, this is the first thing Jen's recruited. Um, and uh, the, t all right, so actually, interestingly, he's an outlaw. And he increases your morale by two, and he has two eyeballs. That means whenever Jen sets up a camp out in the world, she gets plus two bonuses of whatever, whether it's money or crystals, depending on where she sets up her camp. So that was that. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. Now, it, oh, and then another person gets added to the uh, queue in the in the saloon, and it is a uh, it's oh it's a lizard person, and co only costs one to recruit. Wow. And gives you more skill, gives you an eyeball, and gives you a little bit more morale. So, that was Jen's turn. It's my turn now. I've got three. And the interesting thing is, because I already have one outlaw, I have a $1 discount to recruit other outlaws. So, I have three. That means, with the discount, means I could come over to the saloon and hire this guy, who is the who increases my morale even higher so I've got more hearts and having hearts when you go out into, having morale when you go out in the world is a big deal and it's still plus one skill and plus one sword now the tricky thing though is if I come back over here you will notice I can only have one outlaw active on my team at once. I can have a lot of outlaws. Uh, the more outlaws I have, the more points it'll be worth to me at the end of the game because of my special artifact and also once I have four outlaws I can get the outlaw chief um, which is worth points at the end of the game as well. So, if I use the discount of this one to get this one, then I'm only going out, again, with my Master Platypus and my Outlaw. And I'm still just as tough as I was before. But I have more hearts. Um, this is two additional hearts, so I'd go out with two. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I I'm down with that. I went to the mine, made a little bit more cash, and now I'm coming over here, and I'm spending all three of my cash. Am I? Am I? Hold on a second, because instead of doing that, because it's not like my current outlaw, I mean, she's not bad. Because I could be working on my artifacts, which give me bonuses as well. Um, let's see here. Specifically, if I just had one more gold, I could have the flintlock, which means then I could pretty much dual gen, and I, and I score three points for that. If I get myself one crystal, I've got the negative reputation. If I just had one crystal that's worth two points to make the lock pick, and what does the lock pick do? Gain one coin when you defeat a threat. So if I have this, I make money every time I travel from here to here and fight this threat, or from here to here to fight this threat, or from here to here to fight this threat. And since I've got more strength, it makes sense for me to travel and start trying to fight threats because not only will I score points, but I'll make money off of it too. So to do that, I need one crystal. How can I get a crystal? Well, well, if I had more skill, I'd need at least two skill to mine in this spot, which would get me a coin and a crystal. So I can't do that, unfortunately. Um, I can come over here to Town Hall. There's three things you can do in Town Hall. You can engage in trade. You can trade up to five things to get one thing, or one thing to get up to five things, based on the value. So like this mystic faction I've got, if I come over here to engage in trade, it's the most valuable thing in the world to be in good with the mystics. It has a trade value of seven. So if I come over here to engage in trade, I can give up one thing to get up to five things. And that could be like um, a crystal, or like two crystals, or a crystal and a coin, and some food. Or another outlaw faction, which costs four, and a crystal and some food. Um, but here's the interesting thing. For me to come over here, this is, I forgot to mention this. In a two-player game, in a two-player game only, there is always one player character, a dummy player, who sits here who must always be dueled. You can never go to town hall. Even if your opponents aren't there, there's always going to be this dummy player. And I just use a little marker to indicate that. So if I come over there, um, I would have to duel to trade in the goodwill of the mystics to be able to get a bunch of stuff. But then if I got that stuff, I can build some of my artifacts and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool, too. Do I want to do that? Um, yeah, what the heck, let's do it. I'm going to duel, not Jen, because again, you don't have to duel to get into the saloon. I'm going to come over here and do the town hall. Now, first of all, to do anything in town hall, I have to beat this person in a duel. And before I duel, I declare, am I going to fight honorably or dirty? If I fight honorably and win, my reputation will increase. I don't want that. If I to fight dirty, I get plus one on my roll. And if I win, my honor will decrease. 
So I say, I'm fighting dirty. And so I have one for fighting dirty, plus one for my platypus, plus one for my outlaw friend. So I already have three on my roll. So this is me. This is, you know, another player would roll for the dummy player. And so I have three plus four is a seven. And um, I can't tie. I have to beat a one. I dueled that person and beat them very handily. My reputation tanks, which is a good thing. It's negative one point, but hey, I'm that much closer to being able to get this. Once I've gotten this, I can start working to increase my reputation because it's worth points to have good rep at the end of the game. So I'm just I'm getting my reputation down early so I can get I can be the world's best gambler, and then I can climb back up and so I won't have negative points at the end of the game. So anyway, I have successfully dueled them. There are three things I can do in town hall. Um, like I said, I can trade five to one or one to five. I'm going to trade one mystic. Um, so that gives me seven trade value. So I can get up to five items. I could just get five food if I wanted, but I don't want to do that. I want to get a crystal that costs, that's two. And I've got five more. Um, so I could get another outlaw. No, but I'm not going to rush, rush on that. I, I'm, I'm going to wait on that. So I will get myself another coin. And will I get myself another coin? Hmm. Oh. 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 No. I think instead I will get myself another crystal. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and now I've got one more, so I'll get some food. All right. So that is what I traded um, my reputation with the Mystics for to get those resources. Now, I can also, if I want to, I can jettison one of my artifacts in case I'm worried I can't build it. Because here's the interesting thing. Remember, I drafted for these at the beginning of the game. If, and, you know, and they're worth points, upwards of nine points to build these things. But for every one of these I don't build successfully or buy at the end of the game, I lose a point. So this is negative six points right now. This is six points if I don't get these things built. But instead, when I come here, I can jettison because maybe I decided, you know what, I'm never going to get this thing built or this thing built or whatever. I'm not going to do that right now, though. And then the last thing I can do is I can spend money or crystals to increase or decrease my reputation. But my reputation is almost down to negative four. I'm not going to do that right now. So I'm going to ignore, ignore those. I just did a big trade. And now at the end of my turn, anytime I want on my turn, I can buy an artifact if I've got what I need. And I believe I do. I have, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a mercenary contract, which requires two crystals, two gold, and negative two reputation, which I definitely do. I have successfully scored five points for this mercenary contract. And when I buy this card, build a camp on an empty space and gain your reward. So I'm going to put my second camp on the board, which gets me my second buck. So I just got another buck. Yay. And now I can build this anywhere, which is crazy. Um, you know, I, so the question is, where do I build it? And I, you know, it just automatically is built. I don't have to spend hearts. The mercenary contract just let me take over any zone I wanted. Now, the reward I'm going to get is, since I have one eyeball, it would be one gold or one crystal if I build in a gold or a crystal space. However, instead, if I build in one of these trade route spaces, those are worth potentially points at the end of the game. There's two of each trade route. Here, you know, here's some machinery. And where's the other one? All right, here's two shards. Here's, um, there's the, here's two food, uh, the peppers. Here's two um, food. Now, where's the other gear? I cannot find the other. Oh, here, the forge and this space over here. So that's interesting. Uh, because if I get a camp of mine built in both of these, at the end of the game, I will score 10 points. If I get a camp built in one and Jen gets a camp built in the other, then both of us will score four points. So that's a big, big swing to get 10 points. And here's the deal. By being the first to build way out here before, because it takes us, it, it's going to be a while before we level up to where we're strong enough and we have enough hearts to make it all the way to the, these far areas. So I could do that right now. And I'm thinking, and the interesting thing is to get to the forge to build the other one, we got to fight our way through here. I can see that Jen doesn't have any ability to fight whatsoever. So it's more likely that I'm going to want to come up here. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I am going to build my camp here, which gives me no immediate reward. But it's at least four points to me at the end of the game, and maybe ten if I can build over here as well. So that's going to be my next goal. Get out of town, spend one, two 
three, four hearts to get there, and then I would need three more hearts. So I need to have seven hearts to be able to get all the way and build this. That's going to be tough. One, two, three, four, five. I only need five hearts to build there. So maybe I should claim this. Um, cause I see, cause right now when I walk out of town, I have three hearts. If I hire somebody, yeah, yeah, no. Okay. I'm not going to go for the gear. I'm going to go for over here. I'm going to set up a camp in Hogton, which gives me no immediate reward or no, I'm sorry. I'm going for the distant one, but I'm assuming cause I can see Jen only has four hearts. So she would have to pay a heart to skip here and then, oh, so she can, she pays a heart to skip here and then she's got three. So that's no good. One, two, three. No, it's six. I need six to get there. Hmm. My platypus gives me two, which means I need four more. If I upgrade to get this guy, I have a total of five. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go with the original plan. I'm going to go for gears, and I'm hoping I get to the forge before Jen does so I can get those ten points. Because I figure that's too far for Jen to go, especially since she'd have to fight her way there, and she can't fight at all. Right. Because if you try to move through here and you fight and you fail, your turn immediately ends, you lose all your movement. And that's very painful in a race game like this. So that's what I did. I engaged in trade. And after I was done with that, I successfully built my military contract, which gave me a camp way out here. And so now I'm trying to get a camp over there, which, and it's also another reason coming here. Hey, there's another adventure to be had at the forge plus building that camp. So that's my goal, but I need to get a stronger team. Although I don't have to. I walk out with three hearts. If I just on a turn move, move here, that doesn't cost me a heart. And then on my next turn move here, that doesn't cost me a heart. And then my next turn go one, two, that cost me one heart. And, um, oh, but I still wouldn't have enough. So I could move very slowly through the world to preserve my hearts, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to hire somebody who will help out. Anyway, so, and that was the robot. That wasn't me. So, that was my turn. I did some stuff over here. I've got a plan. I built my first artifact. It's Jen's turn. And I think Jen figures it's time to set off into the world. All right. So Jen, looking at her board, her dog and Mr. Invisible gives her four hearts. And I just bumped all of her uh, things. All right. And so where is she going to go? Jen would like to have an adventure too. She's going to go one, two. Now that means she had to spend one heart to skip over this empty space. And what's interesting is if I had successfully put a, um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, my camp there last time, which I didn't because I ran out of hearts, then Jen would have been able to move over this space for free. So she'd have full hearts when she gets here. But since it was empty and Jen skipping over it, she had to pay a heart. And now she has arrived at the star boulder, which means we would either read item number 40, if we were in the world quest or let's see, where's a robot card? We would read, oh, wherever it is. Oh yeah. We would read G1 for her first personal story, but instead we're playing arcade mode. So I tell Jen when she gets there, she's discovered a rock scientist at the star boulder. Now, doesn't that make sense? So honey pie, you have a choice. Would you like to assist the rock scientist in his experiments, which will require a skill of seven or Will you pickpocket? Will you rob the scientist, which only requires a skill of five? Now you can guess from there whether your reputation is going to go up or down. Jen wants her reputation to go up, but a skill of seven, here's the problem. She has one skill because uh, Mr. Invisible didn't really help her. Um, he just helps her collect stuff. <sighs> so Jen has a much better shot at pickpocketing him. Um, and now looking interesting. And the thing is her mirror hat needs seven. Um, so Jen does not want to hurt her reputation. So she's not excited about this. And so she might be in the same spot as me. She could go for it and succeed. Well, if she rolls high, uh, right, Jen, again, like me, Jen has now, because she had to spend one heart here. She has three hearts. She has enough to set up camp here, which, um, you know what? You know what? I think actually, let's shuffle that in. That wish it wasn't a good move for Jen. I think Jen, when she came out, she just went over here to the mill 
And she says, fine, I'm not chasing after adventure. I'm just coming here. There's nothing to fight, no adventure to have, nothing to fight along the way. I'm just going to build a camp. It takes me one, two, three of my four hearts. So she has one heart left over, and she's just going to place her first camp out here in the world. She gets a dollar off of her chart because it was her second camp she built. And she gets coins for building in here. She gets coins equal to her eyeballs. And her eyeballs are one, two, three. So by just stepping one step out and spending three hearts, Jen just got one, two, three, four gold. That makes more sense. So Jen spent almost all her hearts to get four gold. So she's rich again. She can afford to hire another really expensive person. Okay, so that's what Jen did by using the strength of Mr. Invisible, who helps her find stuff when she sets up camp. So that was Jen's turn. And now, she could still, on her next turn, come out here, and she would have one heart left over to maybe have this adventure. Or she can just go back to town. But anyway, so that was Jen's turn. Now it's my turn again. And I'm going to come over here to the saloon, and I'm going to hire this upgraded outlaw. He would cost four, but since I already have one faction favor of outlaw, that's a discount, so it only costs me three, which bankrupts me. Um, and he kind of replaces my current outlaw who helped me in the first fight. So now I still have her for the purposes of faction bonuses, but he's now my active go-to guy, which means when I leave town, I will have five total um, hearts, which is cool. So I came over there and hired that guy, and that was it. And now it's Jen's turn. She can come back to town and do something in town, or she can push on, but she's got to figure. She only has one skill and no combat, so whatever this is, she'll probably fail at it and thereby waste a turn. So Jen's coming back to town, and she's coming back to town with five gold. Oh, by the way, since I just hired somebody, somebody else showed up at the saloon waiting to be hired. And um, what was it? It is a lizard man, a mystical lizard man, which would get Jen in good with the... Oh, and he's super cheap. Wow. And he gives you more skill and more eyeballs. The more eyeballs you have, the better you are at setting up camp. The more sword you have, the better you are at fighting. And the more skill you have, the better you are at mining um, and farming and usually doing quests. Most of the time, quests need skill. Sometimes they need combat. Sometimes they need other things. Sometimes you have to pay money to complete them. You never know. But anyway, so um, this guy came out. So Jen's coming back to town. She could recruit somebody right away. But you know what? I think Jen wants to get ready for a longer trip. She's going to come over here to the stables where she can spend... Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, not to the stables. She's going to come over here to the farm where... Um, she gets one food per skill. She only has one skill, so she's just getting one food. I talked about this earlier. Her next turn, she's going to come over here to get a pack mule, because then once she has a pack mule, she can start carrying a treasure. So that was it. It's my turn again. And I think I'm going to leave town. And um, with my new group. And by the way, when I leave town, I could rearrange stuff if I want. Oh, I've got food. Oh, right, because I did it when I got the trade. Ooh, hold on. Maybe I'm not going to leave town. You know what? I'm going to go to the farm. I'm going to try and duel Jen. Um, because I just want to hurt my reputation more because I need to get it down one more step. Um, and I want... No, I don't want any food. No, no, no. I'm going to come over here to the stables where I'm going to spend one food, the food I got from trading earlier, to get <clears throat> a pack bird. And the pack bird... Um, comes up into one of these slots. And now the pack bird gives me one more maximum movement, and I now have a slot where I can carry a treasure. And Jen says, ah, you're in my way. This is where I was going to go, and now she can't go there because I'm blocking her. She could come here and try to duel me, but she knows I'll win because I've got more swords than her. So what is she going to do instead? Um, I guess she'll come over here. She'll wait for me to get out of the way, and she'll come shopping for a new helper because she has a lot of money. She has five. Although, you know, I haven't even been paying attention to her um, artifacts that she could be building. Let's see what she's got. She has a bunch of artifacts to choose from. She has two bucks. She can make the mystical brew whenever she wants. Hey, you know what? On Jen's last turn, after she went and got some food, before her turn was over, she spent two of the gold she has on hand to complete mystical brew which is worth two victory points, and for the rest of the game, she gets one food for free whenever she goes to the saloon. So she didn't have to waste time going to the farm! Oh, that was kind of dumb. Oh, I've, I've only been paying attention to my own stuff. Sorry. You know, what would have made a lot more sense is, after, when Jen was out here, um, at the end of her turn, after she made that money, she could have made this immediately, 
And then for her next turn, she could have come straight in here to the saloon um, to have recruited somebody with her remaining three bucks, and she would have made food that way. So she wouldn't have had to waste time at the farm. That would have been much more efficient. So let's say she had come back here and she had paid three bucks to get Mr. Hogman, who increases morale by three and gives her more skill. Right, so that would have made sense. And so she recruited him, and she got the food for free. And then it's my turn. I came over to the stables and used my food. And now Jen's like, oh, I want to come to the stables. So she can't. So she has to wait for me to get out of the way. But because Jen now has two skill, she'll come over here to the mine, because that means she can dig deeper or wider. She will dig over here. This is her third camp. And by the way, so far we've been getting money every time we reveal a camp. But this third one, we didn't. We won't get another item until we've done several more camps, at which point we get a crystal. So anyway, Jen just went mining. Um, she had two skills, so she could come here, and that gives her one crystal and one dollar and one point for getting another, ma or another camp on the table. So that was Jen's turn. Now it's my turn. Now I will leave town. No, no, no. Now I'm not leaving town. I'm coming over here, and I draw three and keep one treasure. All right, I can have Wild Nuts, which is a permanent heart increase. Sleeping Potion, which lets me um, sneak past threats. I don't want to do that. I want to fight threats. Jen might want it, though. Or Rice Cakes, which um, the first empty space I pass doesn't cost me any hearts. So this is basically an extra heart, and this is basically an extra heart. But this is a bit more flexible, so I'll take the Wild Nuts. And the other ones are gone. And so my pack bird is now carrying wild nuts. And that's it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. The six that I need to make it to the forge and finish the camp in one turn. Yay. Okay. All right. And so now it's Jen's turn. She'll come over here now that I'm out of the way of the stables. But instead of spending food like I did, Jen just got a crystal in the mine. So she will get a pack turtle, which... Um, Basically, lets her carry something, increases her overall speed, and it also lets her, every turn, it lets her skip one empty space without having to spend hearts. So those turtles are awesome. Absolutely awesome. But they're more expensive because they cost a uh, crystal instead of a uh, thing. So now it's my turn. I'm leaving town. And um, let's see, how far can I move? Oh, I forgot about that. I can move. Oh, I can only move three per turn. Because I have two by default and then one. So I can only move three spaces. So it's going to take me two turns to get to the forge. So let's start moving. One, two, three. All right. Although when I moved across here, I had to stop and fight these bandits. So they've got a strength of four. Um, I have one, two swords. All right. For my two helpers. Five for seven, so I totally beat them. They are worth one victory point plus another camp. I take a camp and I put this on here. So this is another way you can get your camps off work. Remember, once somebody places all their camps, that triggers the end of the game. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll win because you can get a lot of points off of doing artifacts. But anyway, so I beat them um, and then I continued and made it here. Now I could stop. I, I'm stopping here and if I wanted, I could spend three hearts. But anyway, first of all, I spent one Two, I spent two hearts to skip over these two empty spaces. So I started out with six hearts, and I just spent two to get here. And now I could spend three hearts so I could get a camp over here at this crystal mine, but I'm not going to. Next turn, I'm moving here to the forge so that I can have an adventure and complete this trade route and score 10 points. Boom! All right, so that's, uh, it was my turn. Jen's turn. She has a packed turtle, so she needs something on that turtle. A slingshot a canvas tent, or a firebomb. Let's see what these do. Firebomb. Before each combat, roll a die on a six plus two. So basically this helps you. This has a 50-50 chance of helping you in combat, which Jen is not good at. Canvas tent. Gain two hearts when you build a camp on a trade route space, you know, which are specifically like this is a trade route space and this is a trade route space. So that's pretty cool. So you get more hearts. You can stay out longer and travel further or a slingshot plus one on all combat. I think Jen likes those tents, so she's going to take those. So her pack turtle is carrying around. So Jen can now travel further and farther. And she is a better um, camp setter upper. So that was Jen's turn. She's got the treasure. My turn, I'm going to travel one. It doesn't take any hearts because I'm not skipping any spaces. I'm going to have another adventure here. Let's see what it is. It is 
Meteor Shrine! How appropriate that I happen to be in Meteor Mountain. So I can, I found a shrine, a, a Meteor Shrine. I can pray, which requires skill 8, or I can pillage it, which requires skill 5. That is bad news for me. Neither of these are combat. I have a default, this guy gives me plus 1 skill. And since I'm an outlaw, I like pillaging. Hopefully that'll get me in good with the outlaws and all that. So I'm going to pillage. I need a 5. Um, so let's see, let's just roll a 5. A one again. Oh my gosh. So that's one, two for my one helper. And I could spend three, four, five hearts. If I spend three hearts, I can successfully pillage. But then I won't have enough hearts to do the camp. So I'm not going to succeed. I'm purposely going to fail. Which means this is out of the game. It can't be used again. But I needed to save the hearts for my camp. And so that's gone. I found a shrine. I tried to pillage it. I failed miserably. Wow. Um, all right. And, but anyway, now I'm going to spend one, two, three hearts. So now I'm down to having only one heart left and I'm going to set up a camp out here and boom. I've now locked in 10 points for me at the end of the game. And I've got one more heart. So it's not enough to set up a camp, but you know I could travel around, but probably next turn I'm coming back to town and going to do some more stuff. Um, but I've achieved my big 10 points. That might win me the game right there. Um, while Jen, she's now ready to leave town and travel much further because she's got the canvas tent. She'll set up. She'll come over here, do an adventure. Yeah, she's going to leave town and move one, two. She doesn't have to pay a heart to get here. By the way, when she left town, she had, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hearts. So Jen starts with seven morale, seven courage, seven strength, whatever you want to call it. She moved here. It didn't cost her anything. So she moved there for free. She's going to have an adventure. And it is, she's discovered, she finds some injured lizard folk. She can spend five skill to extort or nine skill to heal. There, I mean, again, She's got two skill here. So she can't possibly. Well, she could if she spent, I mean, she's got a lot of hearts. She could win this thing, but she'll blow through all her hearts and not set up camps, which is what she needs to do. Uh, she'll, all right. She says she doesn't want to extort them because she does not want to drop her reputation, even though she could probably do that and still have enough hearts to finish everything else. A moral quandary. Jen would never, ever extort uh, money from injured lizard folk, though. So she said, I will try to heal them. She needs a nine. Let's see what she rolls. A two. Two plus seven. Would, she spends all her hearts. She'll heal these people, but then her trip is over. She can't set up any camps. So she will not spend her hearts, which means she did not get the reward of plus three reputation of blue faction. So she doesn't get that. She failed. This goes away. But she now spends one, two, three hearts to set up a camp here. And this is worth four points. And if she gets to the other one, that's going to be worth 10 points for her to counteract mine. And because of the canvas tents, she gets two hearts when she builds on a trade route space. So she only cost her only one heart to build that. So she can now travel much further. She could travel all the way over here and do another trade route and then keep on traveling. So that was Jen's turn. Uh, didn't do very good healing. We're not doing very well on the adventure so far, but we're doing pretty well, both on radically different strategies. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of what new and improved near and far is all about. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit the eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.